It was during the time when I visited my in-law's house for Christmas. My mother-in-law handed to me a Christmas present, saying it was for your daughter. I opened the package on behalf of my young daughter, and there, my eyes winded involuntarily. What is this? What on earth is it? Filled by anger, I impulsively threw the Christmas present into the trash. I couldn't believe she would sow something like this. Then my husband, who had been watching, shouted from behind me, What are you doing throwing away a Christmas present you received? There's no helping it. It seems like it's time to talk to him as well. You know the thing is, I made up my mind and decided to confess everything to my husband. My name is Isabel and I'm 32 years old. I live with my husband, Andrew, and our two-year-old daughter, Anna. We bought our own house shortly after getting married. Taking into consideration my husband's concern for his frail mother, we built our house just a 10-minute walk away from my in-law's place. Our first impression of my in-laws was that they were a very ordinary and kind of couple. They had cheerful expressions, spoke gently, and approached us in a friendly manner, leaving a lasting impression. It was especially clear that my mother-in-law had raised her only son, Andrew, with great care. She conveyed the feeling well. At the same time, she confided in me with such emotions. You see, I had a hard time conceiving a child. So when I found out that Andrew was coming, it was truly overjoyed. I see. I'm just happy that Andrew was born healthy. But deep down, I also wanted a daughter. So, if someone like you, Isabel, came to be my daughter-in-law, I would be thrilled. Really? I'm so happy to hear you say that. Let's continue to get along well as women. She was a cheerful and easy to talk to my mother-in-law. With her, I thought we could build a good relationship as daughter-in-law and mother-in-law. That's what I believed. But about half a year after our marriage, it all began when our new home was completed. As I had quit my job after getting married, I was to take on the load of a housewife. While unpacking in our newly finished home, while my husband was absent from work, the intercom rang. When I opened the door, there stood my mother-in-law startled by her sudden visit. I couldn't help but show an unnatural reaction. Huh huh, what's the matter all of a sudden? What's the matter? Don't give me that. Hurry up and let me in. Oh, well, I haven't finished unpacking yet. Huh huh, it's been more than three days since the completion of your new home. Why isn't everything unpacked yet? The mother-in-law in front of me glared at me with an unpleasant stern expression. She seemed like a completely different person from the kind of woman I knew. She pushed me aside and went up to the room on her own. She surveyed the living room and the kitchen, let out a deep sigh, and immediately started complaining. Oh my, what is this? You are supposed to be a full-time housewife, yet you managed to make such a mess of the room. No, you see, I'm still in the middle of unpacking. I didn't ask for any excuses. Honestly, becoming a full-time housewife is just so you can take it easy on Andrew's income, isn't it? How petty. 
That's not true. I became a full-time housewife because Andrew wanted me to. Desperately trying to explain myself, my mother-in-law directed a freezing gaze at me. When our eyes met, my mind went blank, and I couldn't find the words to say. In that moment, my mother-in-law mercilessly hurled harsh words at me. Don't get it twisted. I never accepted you as my daughter-in-law. You were only here because Andrew chose you, and I reluctantly accepted it for appearance's sake. But, of course, a plain and unattractive woman like you could never match up to my son. There must be a more suitable partner out there for him. There was no choice of the kind of mother-in-law I met for the first time. Instead, it seemed as if she viewed me as an enemy. From that day on, my mother-in-law's words and actions escalated. She would visit our farm on days when my husband wasn't allowed, relentlessly criticizing me. But the most difficult time was when I was pregnant with our daughter Anna. When my husband and I announced the pregnancy at my in-law's house during the stable period, my mother-in-law was overjoyed. However, the next day, when she visited our farm, she uttered these words in a cold tone. I assume it's a boy, right? Ha ha? Ha ha? That's not what I mean. I'm asking if it's a boy or not. We don't know the gender yet. Oh, I see, but well, it must be a boy. If you can't give birth to a boy, then you truly lose your words as a daughter-in-law. Of course, I mean your own words as well. My mother-in-law laughed scornfully as if mocking me while observing my reaction. Usually, I would just endure her remarks, but this time, I couldn't let it slide. What did she just say? I can tolerate her speaking ill of me to some extent, but I can't allow her to speak ill of our unborn child. I glared at my mother-in-law and broke the silence. Hold on a moment, please. I confronted my mother-in-law without hesitation, releasing all the pent-up frustration in my heart. Mother-in-law, isn't that going too far? Huh? <laughs> what with the sudden attitude? Who do you think you are to confront me? Regardless of the gender, the child in my womb is a precious child of Andrew and me, so please don't say that it's meaningless if it's not a boy. Don't act so high and mighty. Let me tell you, Andrew said the same thing. He said he wouldn't be able to love the child if it isn't not a boy. That's not true. Andrew told me that he would be happy no matter the gender. You think he just said that to appease you temporarily? I'm stating the fact here. It would be troublesome if you start crying or something. My mother-in-law seems determined to corner me with any lie she can come up with. She probably wants to divorce Andrew and me right away. Since then, my mother-in-law has showered me with all kinds of verbal abuse. If you don't give birth to a boy, you have no value as Andrew's wife. If it's a girl, Andrew will leave you. Once you find out the gender, if it's a girl, you should live on your own. And so on. Looking back now, I should have consulted with my husband at this point. But at that time, I was doing my best just to confront my mother-in-law. 
I didn't want to burden my husband, who was working hard every day with unnecessary worries. Afterwards, contrary to my mother in law's expectations, I gave birth to a daughter. Then, my mother in law started coming to our house more frequently, claiming to provide support in raising the child. When my husband was alarmed, she acted like a good mother, but when it was just me and my daughter, she relentlessly blamed me. Isabel, come on. Stop fussing over that child and start thinking about the second one. What are you talking about? Anna is not even a year old yet. You can have a second child after about six months, right? Please make sure to have a proper boy next time. Hold on a moment, both Andrew and I are struggling with our first child. Please wait until Anna turns two before considering a second child. At that moment, my mother-in-law's expression changed as she looked at me. She was clearly furious and started shouting at me. Don't be ridiculous. Wait until she turns two for a second child. That's not a joke. Then why didn't you give birth to a boy in the first place? What are you saying? Isn't it enough that Anna was born safely? I don't care about sad things. A girl won't be the higher. Just hurry up and have a second child. If it's not a boy next time, I won't forgive you. That's unreasonable. If you want to stay as under your wife in the future, listen to my obediently. Otherwise, I'll definitely make sure you get divorced someday. I couldn't bear my mother-in-law's visit anymore, so I decided to quit being a full-time housewife. I read to my husband saying that I wanted to work again and found a job, leaving my daughter in daycare. Time passed. And my daughter turned two years old. She has been growing up healthy and sniping without any major illness. Being young at that time, she doesn't seem to remember when my mother-in-law spoke ill of her. Since I resumed working, I only had weekends and holidays off. Since my husband's days off coincided with mine, there was no chance for my mother-in-law to visit and belight me. It seems she doesn't find this situation amusing. Lately, my mother-in-law's visits have significantly decreased. And today, on Christmas, we have to go to my in-law's house as a family. Normally, I could refuse the visit, citing exhaustion from work. But Christmas is an expectation. We can't avoid it. When my husband, daughter, and I arrive at my in-law's house, my mother-in-law greets us with a beaming smile. Oh, welcome, Andrew, Isabel, and a little honor too. My husband raises his hand in greeting to my mother-in-law. Long time no see, mom. Sorry for not being able to come home often. It's lonely, but it can't be helped. Isabel started working too. Yeah, that's right. Her job seems quite demanding. I want to make sure she gets enough rest on her days off. Well, Andrew, you, you are such a kind person. Come inside, please. Prompted by mother-in-law, we entered the house following my husband and daughter. At that moment, you didn't have to come. I whispered in her eye, but I pretend not to hear it. In the living room, New Year's dishes are laid out, and my father-in-law and daughter are enjoying their meal together. Looking harmonious. 
On the other hand, every time I show a smile, my mother-in-law glares at me as if to say, don't enjoy themselves. I just can't bring myself to suggest going home. As time passed with trivial conversations, I suddenly realized that it was already evening. Should we head home soon? Finally, those words from my husband lightened my heart. Leaving the living room and heading towards the entrance, I heard my mother-in-law calling my name, Isabel. She held a Christmas present in her hand, and with a smile on her face, she handed it to me. Here is a Christmas present for Anne. Oh, thank you. What's the matter? You needed to be polite. I just wanted to give it to my granddaughter, Anna. I see, thank you very much, Sam. Oh, by the way, when you get back, make sure Isabel checks and manages the contents, okay? Isn't it Isabel who manages the child account? Understood. I put the received Christmas present into my bag, thanked her quickly and left my in-law's house. When I told my husband about receiving the Christmas present from my mother-in-law, Can you hold on to it, Isabel? However, at that moment, I couldn't help but feel uneasy. Ever since our daughter was born, we have always visited my in-law's house on Christmas when she was zero years old and even when she turned first. But I have never received the Christmas present before. So why only this year? Having a bad feeling about it, I asked my husband to base our daughter while I checked the Christmas present from my mother-in-law. I opened the package and peered inside. There, I found a doll and a note. When I took it out and lit out it, I was shocked to see my mother-in-law's complaints written all over it in her handwriting. Isabel, you are a failure as a daughter-in-law for not only giving birth to a child, but also not considering a second one. Separate from Andrew immediately. As I read the beginning, my eyes widened in disbelief. The recent words towards me from my mother-in-law continue with her ugly handwriting. You are below average. Worthless daughter-in-law, get a divorce and apologize. Don't ever involve yourself with my son again. Unbelievable, what is this? Do they find the satisfaction in belittling others to this extent? And to think they lied about it being a Christmas present for my daughter sneaking something like this in. Anger wells up inside me, and my hand holding the note begins to tremble. After reading it all, I clutched the note in my hand. An uncontainable anger surges from the depths of my being, causing me to lose my composure. Unforgivable. If it has come to this, I won't show any mercy either. I will confront them head on. I stuffed the clump pulled the note back into the Christmas present and forcefully threw it into the trash can. In the next moment, What are you doing? As I turned around, I see my husband with a flushed face. He picks up the discarded Christmas present back from the trash can and approaches me, his voice filled with anger. This is a Christmas present my mother gave, right? Why did you throw it away? Why? Because I didn't have any other choice but to throw it away. 
What are you talking about? Did you see what's inside? Ha <laughs> ha. Prompted by me, he reluctantly checks the contents as instructed. He reads the note from my mother-in-law and is left speechless. What? What is this? It's a letter addressed to me from your mother. I've been enduring her harassment ever since I married you, Aunt Liu. Harassment? Are you joking? It's truth. This note is the evidence. Honestly, I didn't expect it to go this far. No way, not my mother. I finally revealed everything that my mother-in-law has been doing to me since we got married to my husband today. As I continued speaking, Andrew listened attentively without uttering a word. Once he had heard everything, he spoke in a low voice. I'm calling right now. He took out his smartphone and he dialed his father's number. Put it on speaker, please. He asked his father to put the call on speaker, and the conversation began. Dad, the truth is Isabel has been injuring harassment from mother. As my husband revealed the truth, his father raised his voice on the other end on the phone. What she did that to Isabel? I can't forgive, man. That's why I wanted you to know too, Dad. Of course, I won't tolerate such behavior. My father-in-law called out my mother-in-law's name as if shouting at her. Unaware of what had transpired, she appeared and casually said, "What's going on?" In response, my husband unleashed his anger without mercy. Mom, no, you are harassing Isabel. I'll never forgive you for that. Under you, what are you talking about? I read it earlier. The note you wrote to Isabel, pretending it was our daughter's Christmas present. You are truly despicable, ma'am. Wait, it's not what you think that. What different? Your agitating speaks volumes, doesn't it? Well, it seemed she never expected me to confess to my husband at this point, realizing that making excuses would be futile in this situation where my husband and father-in-law were aware of the truth. She must have understood. Her voice grew quieter, and eventually fell silent. And the one who delivered the final blow to her was none other than my father-in-law. We are getting a divorce. Ha <laughs> ha! What are you saying? Divorce can be in a marriage with a despicable person like you, who bullies your daughter-in-law. That's not true. I just don't make excuses. Pack your things and leave. I could hear my mother-in-law's sobbing voice through the phone. In an unexpected twist, she sought to help from me. Please, Isabel, I apologize for everything up until now. No matter how many times, how many dozens of times. So please explain everything to Andrew and your father. If she had apologized even just a few words in this situation, I would have considered forgiving her. But now all she cares about is self-preservation. How to avoid being abandoned by my husband and father-in-law? That's the only thing she's thinking about. Having grown tired of my mother-in-law's true nature, I retorted over the phone. Enough is enough. How self-centered can you be? Neither me nor our daughter exist for your self-satisfaction. I can tolerate it, but subjecting honor to your stress—what kind of mother does that? 
What you've done is nothing but the building, not just to me, but to anyone else. Isabel, wait, calm down. Charlotte, I've endured it until now, but I've reached my limit. I can't stay silent as a parent when my beloved daughter is being denied. We can't be familiar with a fossilized human being like you. With outdated thinking, never come near us again. Wait, please, Isabel. As if drawing out my mother-in-law's voice, my husband pressed the end call button. I'm sorry, I didn't realize. He held me tightly, and tears uncontrollably streamed down my face. Afterward, it seems my father-in-law made my mother-in-law sign the divorce papers and kicked her out of the house. My father-in-law intends to cut ties completely, and he's been telling the neighbors about this incident to ensure my mother-in-law won't return. With nowhere to go. My mother-in-law ended up seeking shelter at my brother-in-law's place, but it appears that my father-in-law had already informed him of the situation, so she was turned away at the doorstep. We have no way of knowing what became of her. On the other hand, the three of us continue to live in peace as a family, considering the deteriorating condition of the family home. My father-in-law plans to move in with us a few months from now, with my husband and father-in-law who believed in me and protected me. I want to continue supporting our family, never forgetting the gratitude I hold for them.